1 Corinthians, for I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant on my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you for watching. Today's Mass is being offered for Lawrence Imbolas, a friend of Deacon Norms. So as we come to pray for Lawrence, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Lawrence Imbolas. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in our flesh may win at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. <coughs> he will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Exalt you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Exalt you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. And exalt and just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all generations. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Exalt the just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Exalt the just in the Lord. Sing a new song. We sing. Lord our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Ghost. 
gospel according to Luke. Lord. Mary set out in those days and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Thank you for celebrating this Mass today and for the intention of Mr. Warrington Bowles. He was a friend of my dad, and then as fate would have it, he actually wound up being my sister-in-law's stepdad, and so he was like a member of the family, and he passed away here a few months. So we pray for his soul, and we pray for the comfort for his family, and I thank you for joining in that today. Today, our gospel reading revolves around the mystery of the visitation. This should probably sound a little familiar since it was the reading from this past Sunday. And it's the fourth Sunday in Advent. And the last week of Advent focuses on Mary. If you recall yesterday, Monday, we had the Annunciation. Today, we have the Visitation. Tomorrow, we will hear the Magnificat. Having said yes to being the mother of our Lord and finding out that her cousin was going to have a child, Mary walks about 90 miles through rocky and hilly terrain to be with Elizabeth in her time of need. Our gospel gives us the joy and humility that Elizabeth feels being in the presence of Mary. Even the unborn John the Baptist reacts to Mary's presence. Now, some may see folk, this focusing on Mary just before the celebration of the birth of Jesus as perhaps taken away from him. But I think that it's just the opposite. But brothers and sisters in Christ, Mary is the example for us to follow if we want to be closer to Christ. Mary does four things that if we do them, will bring us closer to Jesus. The first is she hears the word of God. In Nazareth, she hears God speaking through the angel Gabriel. For us, the word of God is available to us in our Bibles. So to hear the word of God, we need to read our Bibles. Second, she obeys the word of God. She says, may it be done to me according to your word. How open are we to truly following God's word? Mary's yes to God's word changed the world. Your yes to God's word will change your world. Third, Mary had a servant's heart. Without a moment's hesitation, she sets out on a mission to assist her older cousin in her time of need. How quickly do we respond to the needs of others? Do we serve willingly and without hesitation as Mary did? And finally, I'd like to ask you to imagine yourself as Mary at that manger on Christmas Day. Joseph lays the newborn Jesus in your arms and you see him for the first time. You are in the presence of Christ. You're in the presence of God. And you simply adore him. That same sense of peace and calm awaits us in Eucharistic adoration if we look like Mary upon Jesus. Mary wants us to have a deeper relationship with Jesus, her son. What mother doesn't want the world to love their child? As we exit Advent and enter the Christmas season and beyond, follow Mary's example. Hear, obey, 
serve, and adore. Let us now stand and present our needs, praying for Lawrence and Bolas, for uh, all our sick, for the faithful departed, for all those who have asked for special prayers, for people traveling, and for an end to this coronavirus. Let us pray. We pray for the intercession of St. Joseph, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church, to guard us in these times of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our hands. For Pope Francis, that he guide the church with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our hands. That all bishops, priests, and deacons have the courage to speak the truth in these difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our hands. For the quad process, that it builds the church by building disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our hands. That those suffering illness will link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the example of Mary. She is the ideal disciple. May we follow her example and welcome Jesus with joy into our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God, forever. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by your gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find his watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. I prepare myself for the whole day struggle. Holy Communion assures me that I will win the victory, and so it is. I fear the day when I do not receive Holy Communion. This spread of the strong gives me all the strength I need to carry on my mission and the courage to do whatever the Lord asks of me. The courage and strength that are in me are not of me, but of Him who lives in me. It is the Eucharist. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offering, and pour out of them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, we could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love. 
For your son who alone is just handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he is about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my Lord. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the power Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Amen. with you, sir. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. I only say the word, and the Son shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire 
desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may participation in this divine mystery provide enduring protection for your people, so that being subject to your glorious majesty in dedicated service, they may know abundant health in mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for joy. Good morning. The history of the Israelites has been a long story of God's love for his people, who time and again worshipped him and then turned away to worship pagan gods. God protected them, but allowed them to experience the destruction and despair that comes from leaving him out of their lives. It brings to mind our present time and what we are experiencing as we have put God out of our lives, our cities, our nation. God has not abandoned us. He just does not force himself on anyone. However, we who still search for and look to God do feel his presence in our lives. Zephaniah is a prophet during the reign of Josiah between 640 and 609 BC. So Zephaniah is telling the people that despite all that they've been through, they should be joyful for God is forgiving them and no longer judging them because of their disloyalty to him. And in the same way, when we ask for forgiveness, God tells us that he forgives us and no longer remembers our sins. Zephaniah then states that on that day, fear not. Be not discouraged. What day? How long will it be before the prophecy of God being in their midst is fulfilled? This had to be prophesied at least 600 years before the birth of Christ. And there is cause for us to realize that when God sends prophets to his people, it is in his time, not ours, that these prophecies are fulfilled. We know that Jesus came and fulfilled God's promise of a Savior, but could this prophecy also point to things yet to come? We have been waiting for Jesus' second coming for almost 2,000 years. For us, this is a long time to wait, especially in the world of instant gratification. But as Zephaniah stated, fear not, be not discouraged, don't give up, believe. And because we know that God always fulfills his promises, we can say, shout for joy and sing songs of praise because our God is in our midst. As our Advent season is ending in a few days, we are preparing to celebrate the birth of God's son with beautiful Christmas carols and gift giving. But let us not forget to continue to wait joyfully in hope from Jesus' second coming. Even if his coming is not in our lifetime, we know that Jesus will come to us at the end of our life on earth. Yes, and we should be preparing for Christmas with prayers and repentance and joyful expectation, but at the same time, throughout our whole life, lives, we must continue to prepare for the second coming of Christ as well. But we should always be in anticipation to welcome our Savior no matter how or when he comes to us. A quote from the book Magnificat states, Our Advent hope stands on tiptoe, searching the horizon for that glorious day. This quote brings to mind children eager, waiting eagerly for what Christmas morning brings from a mere mortal, Santa Claus. If only we would capture that enthusiasm 
as we wait on tiptoe in eager anticipation of what our God brings to us, the Savior of the world. Today's first reading ends with, He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. What an awe-inspiring image of God celebrating us in song. You and I can be the reason God will rejoice over us in gladness as long as we keep him in our lives. And we will fear not, for God continually renews us in his love. And now a commercial. Tonight we are having reconciliation with a lot of priests here. What a wonderful time to come and let God renew us in his love. Thank you. Thank you. Good girl, Joan. I'm glad you did that commercial. <laughs> Got a cute email here. And this really doesn't go with an Irish accent, so excuse me. <laughs> in a small southern town, there was a nativity scene that showed great skill and talent had gone into creating it. One small feature bothered me. The three wise men were wearing fireman's helmets, totally unable to come up with a reason or explanation. I left. At a quick stop on the edge of town, I asked the lady behind the counter about the helmets. She exploded in a rage, yelling at me, You Yankees never do read the Bible. I assured her that I did, but simply couldn't recall anything about firemen in the Bible. She jerked out her Bible from behind the counter and rustled through some pages and finally jabbed her finger at the passage. Sting it in my face, she said. See, it says right here, the three wise men came from afar. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, <laughs> the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love Thanks. and serve the Lord. And and God. God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, so you're faithful. And thank you for the inspiring your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God.